Wish you'd clap for me like you clap for them. Yeah, 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 a bunch of hypocrites, but anyway. I'm a whole lot better looking than the guy that was standing behind the pulpit, I know that. I'm not as pretty as the one sitting on this, standing on this side over here. And, um, but anyway, Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, and once you have found it, let's all stand as we read the Word of God this evening, Hebrews chapter 11. And we're going to start reading in verse 13 this evening, Hebrews 11 and verse 13. And if you have it, give me a good strong amen. Would you do that? Amen. I think that's a little weak. Let's try that one more time. If you have it, give a good strong amen. amen. Scripture says in verse 13, These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they say, for they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country. That is, a heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. This thought, this sermon, I have had on the hopper, oh, good night, maybe a year, if not a little bit longer than that. I've been wanting to preach this for a while. I've just been waiting for God to tell me the right opportunity, and I think this is the time. I want to talk to our church, and I want you to listen intently. Now, don't, I, I, may, I want to say some things that are probably just a little bit sharper than normal, but I want you to listen. I want you to get the whole sermon. I want to speak tonight on this topic, Heaven's Culture. Heaven's Amen. Culture. Father, take these next few minutes. Lord, I, I want to be a help to our church. Lord, I'm asking you this evening, help our church to be a place where Heaven's Culture is embraced and lived and talked about and told about. Lord, that's what I want. I pray that you'd help us, please. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Our church is a very unique church. Unique in the fact that we are very diverse in culture. Different, di- different nationalities. For instance, um, I look. We've got a. We've got a. Uh, is this the real Indian up here? We got an Indian right here. He's the lone Indian, but he's the Indian. Yeah, he's alone. Yeah. He- <laughs> then we've got we've got American Indians. We've got we've got Americans. We've got Indonesian. We've got Filipinos. We've got um, Thai, right? right Thai. Um, we've got African Americans. We've got Africans that come to our church. We've got Hispanics, the Mexicans back there. And I think we've got, um, it seems like I'm Filipinos. Oh, I almost forgot that one. And the Filipinos. And I'm trying to think if I'm missing any other, um, we got some Puerto Ricans here tonight. And I think so. And and Puerto Rican or Cuban, Cuban. We have Cubans here tonight. Now we've got all kinds of cultures in this church. I don't know that I've ever been in a church that has as, and don't take this wrong, that has as much color and diversity as this church. I like that. Because when you get to heaven, God's not, you're not going to stand at the door and God's not going to say, what nationality are you? God's not going to say, what, what color is your skin? Let me see the color of your skin. God's not going to do that. God's not going to even say, well, did you ride a bus or did you drive in? One thing that's going to get you into heaven is putting your faith and trust in Jesus Christ to be your Savior. And the great thing I love about the gospel, it's a multicultural gospel that reaches everybody, no matter the background, no matter their skin color. And thank God I have a God that didn't just love one race or one color. He loved the whole world. I will fight against the day that this church ever becomes a white church, a Mexican church, a black church, a Filipino church. I want us to have everybody inside of this church. Hey, our, when listen, we can't help the, the wrapping paper that God puts around the soul. Somebody help me out. And the color of the wrapping paper really does not matter. What does matter is the soul on the inside. That's what matters. And somewhere, listen to me, I, I, I tell people that, that think about moving here. Now, I say, if you have a drop of bigoted blood, don't come to our church. 
You say, well, I don't want that in our church. Not at all. I want people that love every person, every color, because that's what I believe God likes, and I believe God's pleased with that in our church. However, I will be, but I cannot close my eyes to this. With all the different nationalities that we have in this church, that brings several different cultures. I've traveled, I've had the privilege in my lifetime to travel to several um, different countries. I, th I think I've preached in six or seven different countries. Now, when you go to a foreign country, Country, um, that you have to make some adjustments when you go to that country because each place has its customs that they do that are different than what we would do right here. I remember the first time I went to the Philippines, I, and, and I, I kind of exposed that the other day. I'm in church service. There's song leaders. Um, before they go to sing, they're going to say, um, "What you know, we're going to sing, what can wash away my sin? They'll sing that first, first line, and then they say, Ready? Sing now. He now we've gotten Brother Tremble past that right there, but it, but but yet, but that's what. So I the they, the the song leader started singing the first time I went to the Philippines, and he started that first line. I started with him. They all looked at me like, "What's wrong with this guy?" I didn't realize I wasn't supposed to sing. That's the song leader doing it. Then he's supposed to say, "Ready, sing," and then you sing. Well, I had to learn. I had to adjust. Yeah. I thought, that's different. I don't know if I want to do that here. Did you have to do that? Okay, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. And so it's so it's one of those things. Now, every place has a different culture. Every place. There's some words you can say in the United States you can't say in other countries. Because in another country, that may be a curse word. Now, follow me very carefully. Not only must I be careful, but, I, but they can tell I'm from a different country. They can tell it. I go to the Philippines. They all, they, I did, first time I was there, they all started calling me Joe. I thought, why, why is everybody, my name's not Joe. And they say, hey, Joe, hey, Joe, how you doing, Joe? And I'm thinking, what is this with Joe? I mean, what is this? Thing? Well, it's G.I. Joe because the American base is over there. All Americans are called Joe. So I was Joe. And for the whole, time, whole month, I was, I was Joe. Hey, hello, Joe. I'm not Joe, but Hello. I'd go, I'd go to Mexico, and I had to learn in Mexico. I had, to, I had to carry myself a little bit different in Mexico than what I would in the United States. And get this now, I've been in some of these countries, and they, and they can tell, oh, there's a foreigner. You, you know, you go to Mexico, oh, yeah, we can get this guy. I, my wife and I, we were in Mexico together, and, and we went to one of, the, um, one of those, shop, those places where they sell. I'm a, I'm a horrible person to barter with. I, I can't, I'm not good at that, but my wife, now, she's cutthroat. I mean, she, she's good at it. <laughs> so I, we go through that. I said, honey, you do it, because I said, if I do it, I said, they'll, take, they'll see the white guy come, and they're going to get my money. I said, you got to do it. And she knew, she knew exactly how to do it. She'd go, and they'd say, oh, only $15. She goes, how about five? I mean, man, she's going to rob. Yeah, yeah, there, there's another one right there. Hey, and, and, and sure enough, we walk away with about $7 spent. I mean, I'd have probably paid $12. But, but, but you see, but, that, but they know it's the culture you're in. You, they say, oh, we know that person's different. The way they talk, the way they dress, the way they, everything about them, their culture is different. Now, can I tell you tonight, one main thing that, that God, that, that was different about the Bible and these in Hebrews 11 was they realized they were strangers and pilgrims on this earth. When they got saved, they dropped their Jewish culture to embrace a heaven culture and they say we are no longer of the Jews we are of heaven and that's the culture that we want to live they said we they embrace about I like what the Bible says they were persuaded they embraced they confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on this earth get this now they embraced they were a foreigner they embraced that they were a tr they were just traveling through I like that song that we sing I'm just I'm, I'm this world is not my home. Oh, where I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. Oh, I thank God for that. I like that thing to think that, hey, I'm just traveling through this old world. The scripture says they seek a country. They desire a better country. I was born in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Lived most of my childhood life in California. There's a, there's a drastic difference there. 
But I still, I still talk somewhat like a southerner. I, even though I, I remember when I went to California, I, I would say, I would say, "Ho, where, where's the? Ho? There's a ho." They start laughing. There's an L in that word. Well, it's not an L in the South. It's just ho. There's a ho there. You know, we just kind of shorten things up down south. And 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 and, and Mark, brother Mark, laughs at me how I say roof. Uh, if it's it's a roof, you know. He says, "No, it's not a dog. It's roof, roof. You know, whatever it is." God lift up my head just to say it like he does. That's how Filipinos say it anyway. But anyway, you have to understand. But it's the culture difference. The culture difference. Listen to me. When I got saved, can I tell you? I was no longer a Californian. I was no longer a Tennessean. I was I was from heaven. My place is heaven. My destination is heaven. My culture has got to become heaven. Everything I do, hey, I have to embrace the heaven culture. Amen. Do you understand? When you got saved, you became a citizen of heaven. When you got saved, there in heaven, there is no white culture, black culture, Mexican culture, Filipino culture, African culture, American Indian culture, northern culture, southern culture, east culture, west culture. Hey, there's heaven's culture when we get to heaven. Thank God when we get to heaven, they're not going to have this little group here and another little group over there, another little group over there and some little group over there. No, in heaven. Thank God when we get to heaven. Hey, be heaven's culture. Heaven's culture. Now listen carefully. I do not want this church to ever have our little cliques in our church. Now I don't believe we have any problems, but I'm preaching this to keep us from having problems in this. I don't want a Mexican, um, a Mexican department clique or a Filipino clique or an or a African-American clique or a white clique or an American Indian clique. I want us just to be a church family and embrace heaven's culture and everybody says, hey, we're all the same brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's embrace that culture. You see... Your, our, our culture is to be heavens. Yeah. Right. Right. Now listen, that means this. Whatever you say you are, you're not. Right. Yeah. Right. Amen. You're not Indian. Yeah. You're heaven. Right. You're not American Indian. You're heaven. Right. You said federal government. Federal government says a lot of things. Right. Somebody help me out. Amen. You see, because in heaven, God's not gonna, God doesn't classify. No, God says we're all, we're, listen, when you're saved, you're, you're of the same body of Christ. Somebody help me out. And I'm tired, of, I'm tired of churches having their little classes, and I don't ever want us to be that way. I want us to embrace heaven's culture inside of this church and live like heaven would want us to live. You say, what are you talking about? I'm talking about the words we say. We ought to talk like we're from heaven. Somebody help me out. I Listen, I do not want us to talk like the slaying of the world. I want us to talk the, word, the words that God would have us to speak. Why? Because I'm not of the world. I'm of heaven. I told you all a couple of weeks ago, I think it was in one of my sermons, somebody, uh, I was talking to somebody, and they, I said, when did you do that? They said, oh, a minute ago. I thought, a minute? No, I said, no, I was here a minute ago. They said, in a, in a minute. I said, no, it's not been a minute. They said, preacher, it's just been a minute. And, I, and finally, it clicked. They meant a long time ago. A minute is 60 seconds. Somebody help me out. Amen. <laughs> Man, they're cool. They're cold? We better get them a jacket. <laughs> it's amazing how Christians take on the language of the world. Listen to me. We don't need to take on the language of the world. Listen to me. It's not, okay, we, we, we look at how the world wants to use, the, wants to use terminology to, to pacify their sin. Can I tell you? I don't know. It can be A, B, C, all the way to Z, but can I tell you? I don't know what that lifestyle is. I just know God calls it sodomy and abomination against Almighty God. I'm always amazed that, they, that the, an abominable lifestyle takes on the abominable word of pride as their month-long embracement. Why would you take on the very sin that God hates? It's not abortion. It's murder. Amen. Yes, 
Somebody help me out. Well, they're little, little th that young man's just a little sissified. No, he's effeminate. You might as well hang on to this because we're going for a while. I don't want to raise our young men to be effeminate. I want some young girls here to, to grow up and be able to find a real man that they know that's a man right there. I don't want him prancing around, looking like a little girl somewhere, talking like a little girl. I want him walking like a man. I want him to have some scars on his hands. Why? Because we're not to have effeminate young men inside of our church. Likewise, we're not to have manly women in our church. Scary when the woman's voice is deeper than the man's. I want our ladies to be ladies. I want us to have the heaven's culture, and when you get in heaven's culture, you talk like God would want us to talk. We don't say, we don't use filthy words. Okay, here we go. Might as well. For instance, I, I, I don't, okay, there's certain words. I'm afraid to say them because I'm afraid my mom will reach out of heaven and slap my mouth. But anyway, when I was a boy, the G words, I, I, can't, I can't say them because I'm afraid my, I got my mouth washed out one time and I don't want to happen again. I don't like dial soap. But anyway, and, uh, and, and the G words were popular back then. It, you know, um, G-O-L-L-Y and, and G-O-S-H and those kind of words right there. My, I remember one time I came home from school and I used, I used G-O-L-L-Y. I started halfway, caught myself, Brother Stafford. Mom said, what'd you say? I said, I said, uh, you know, you try, you know, what do you do? You're halfway. It's, it's already out. She goes, oh, we got to get that language. You say, what's so bad with that language? You look it up in the dictionary. It's, it's, a, it's a slang for the name of Jesus Christ. My Savior's name is not a curse word. It's a holy name that ought to be revered. That's good. I don't think Christians ought to use the, words, the word S-U-C-K. Yeah, man. You say, why? They're, we're not going to say that in heaven. Right. Some, come on, somebody help me out. It's like I, somebody sucked the air out of this place on that one right there. I'd have talk like people realize this guy's not of the world. Amen. Something different about the way he talks. He doesn't have dirty jokes, doesn't have filthy jokes. He talks clean. Amen. Doesn't use jokes that talks about a woman's anatomy, but treats a lady, a woman, like a lady because she deserves to be treated like a lady. She's not an object, she's a lady. Heaven's culture. Heaven's culture. You say, preacher, preacher, you won't build a church that way. Yes, but we'll have heaven's culture here. We ought to, the way we live, ought to be like heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Our families ought to represent what, he, what, what we'd be like, what our family would be like in heaven. Yeah. That's good. Listen, I think families ought to serve God together. Amen. Now, I'm not saying you have to be in the same route, but you ought to be serving God going forward together. I like Brother Turk. He has a couple girls go with um, one, one somebody, and then, and then he'll take some of his children out in a bus route. And I, I watch some of the parents here. They'll put one child here and another child on another bus route, and they're serving. I like that. I like the. I, I see um, brother, brother Jim and Miss Birdie with Vince. Vince goes out on Brother Hall's route, and they go out and go out and knock on doors a different route. But they're all serving God together. Serving God again. Heaven's culture. Heaven's culture. I wonder what would happen in our marriages if we made our marriage mirror what God wants it to have instead of the marriage of the world. I think the way we dress ought to represent heaven's culture. Summertime is here. And just because it's summertime doesn't mean it's okay to show off your body to, and, and to flaunt it. Listen to me, we are still to keep our clothes on in the summertime and cover our nakedness just like what we do in the wintertime. Somebody help me out with that. 
Scripture teaches very clearly anywhere from the shoulder down to the knee is considered your nakedness. And so anything from here all the way down to here off to anybody else other than my spouse is an abomination against God. You say, preacher, this is 2022. Culture changes. Heaven's culture hasn't changed. I like to watch our ladies coming into church with our dresses on. I like the men coming into church with the shirt and pies on, looking like, hey, we're not trying to look like a country club. We're trying to look like a church. Heaven's culture. Heaven's culture. I think our church services ought to look like heaven's culture. I don't think our churches, I don't think that, I don't believe our churches ought to look like a rock concert. I don't believe it ought to look like a bar scene. I think it needs to look like church. When we were discussing on the new auditorium over here, we had the light people in, and they were discussing. They said, now, they, were, they said, and Brother Mark was with me, and they started going through everything they could with about what we can do inside the church. Finally, I just stopped the man. I said, sir, let me help you out just a little bit. I said, I'm a little old-fashioned. I said, we're children of light. I said, I'm not looking for colored lights. I'm looking for even colored lighting all the way through the whole. I said, they're not coming to watch me perform. We're all in church together. He said, but every other church, not looking at every other church, I'm looking at heaven. Yes, sir. Heaven's a place where there is no darkness. Somebody help me out. So if I'm going to bring heaven's culture down here, then I've got to make sure when we come into church, it's a place of light because that's what heaven will be like. I want our music to represent heaven's culture. I don't want our music to ever bring on a hinge of the world. I want it to bring on heaven. Heaven's culture. I want our Christians to to live like they were in heaven. I want their character to represent heaven. I want their dependability to to look like heaven. I want their their name to to look like they were living in heaven. I want everybody to know that we are from heaven. Listen very carefully. I want every ministry in our church to look like, uh, to represent heaven's culture and not the world's culture. I want our teenagers to look like they're in heaven's culture, not the world's culture. I want our Christian school to be a place of heaven's culture, not the world's culture. I want our nursery to look like heaven's culture and not the world's culture. I want our music department to sing songs that they would sing in heaven, not what they'd sing in a bar scene somewhere. I want our, I want our, I want our singles to have a heaven's culture as they have the activities and act like they're in a place, like they represent a place that they're headed to. I want our seasoned saints when they go on activities to have activities that would represent heaven's culture. I want every adult class to represent heaven's culture. I want everything inside of this church to represent the culture of the place that I'm going to, that place called heaven. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. That's good. Amen. Go ahead. Sadly, you can walk into a lot of churches and you have to ask yourself, am I in a church? Or I'm at a bar. The music they play sounds no different than the bar music that some used to hear in the bar. You say you mad at anyone? Not mad at anybody. I just want to embrace heaven's culture. I'm, I, I'm not a southerner. I'm not a westerner. I'm not an Oklahoman, I'm a heavener. Amen. I don't know if that's a word, but we're going to make it a word. Amen. No English, no, 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 I don't want to hear anything from the English people out here. <laughs> Listen to me. They say, where are you, where are you, where are you a citizen of heaven? Yeah. Heaven, headed to a place called heaven. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Amen. Let me give you a few statements. When you got saved, your worldly culture is no longer your culture. Okay. People often explain, excuse away things that well, our culture does this, and somebody help me out a little bit. Don't get quiet now. 
It doesn't matter what your culture does. What does God's culture say? We're letting culture dictate how we live and what we do when there's only one culture that should influence me, that's heaven's culture. So how do I figure out heaven's culture? How about getting inside this book every day, read this book? How about walk with the God that, that, that runs that place called heaven up there? You might find that you'll like his culture. People say, well, that music that you guys like, that bores me because you've been listening to the world's cultured music. I remember when I was a young boy, for about six months I listened to the world's rock music. Those six months, I grew a distaste for the world, for the, for the Christian music. When I got caught, so how'd you get caught? Principal of our school preaches a whole sermon on rock music. He said, I got on a piece of paper, several names that come to this school that I know listen to rock music. He says, now, if you don't stay back after chapel's over, he says, you will be kicked out. I, well, conviction's already there. I stayed back. Pastor Hallberg, he looked at me, he says, Alan, he says, you're the one person I'd have never thought. But my mom taught in the school. My mom saw me stand back. And I remember watching my mama walk out. Tears running down her face. Remember when I got home, that was the longest day of school in my entire life. Wasn't afraid of mom. But I knew I broke my mama's heart. I mean, I got home, my mom looked at me and she just started, she was crying. She was, son, Why? From that day on, Brother Harjo, I said, I'll never listen to that music again. And I haven't. I'm amazed. And I'll tell you what was amazing. My love for Christian music started coming back. You're telling on yourself when the music that we have in this church doesn't stir. Hey, it's still the blood. How does that not stir your heart? I'm on the winning side. How does that not stir your heart? That's a whole lot better than having this rap music that talks about grabbing a gun, going out and killing somebody. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Or the country and wrestling music that talks about running off of something with your friends, your best friend's wife. You say, preacher, you're a little pointed tonight. Oh, you've not seen the real Alan Domley yet. Heaven's culture. Statement number two, when your culture and heaven's culture conflict, you're to embrace heaven's culture. I'm not against you having your culture, but when it conflicts with heaven's, then you forsake yours and you embrace heaven's. Can I tell you, the world's culture often, if not most of the time, will almost always conflict with heaven's culture. As a believer, you're to lay aside, and I know this is not a popular statement, your nationality and your culture to live in heaven's culture. You should ask yourself every time you do something, what would they do in heaven? Would God play this music in heaven? Would God say this joke in heaven? Would God come dressed like this in heaven? Would God live like this in heaven? Would God watch this in heaven? Hey, heaven's culture. Statement number three, you will never make a difference in this world for Christ until you embrace heaven's culture. You know why these in Hebrews 11 changed the world? Because they embraced a different culture 
And people say something different about them. Can't put my hand on it. Can't put, but there's something different about them. And finally, they said, we could tell these people have been with Christ. I'm not saying we have to be weird. Not saying that. I am saying we ought to embrace the culture from where we're headed to. I don't want culture shock, Brother Dion, when I get to heaven. I want to live so close to what heaven's culture is like. I want to get closer every day to the culture of heaven so that when I step onto heaven's shore, I'd be able to say, I feel like home. I feel like home. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's golden shore, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Amen. Amen. And I want to get to heaven. I look I long. I, I'm not looking for the next bus. And I'm not, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't think I want to be there anytime soon, but I tell you what I can do. I can try to bring as much heaven's culture down here. Yes. Brother Aguilar, you may be Hispanic and I may be um, Tennessean. <laughs> it don't matter. That's right. That's right. We're in heaven's culture. Brother Allen, you may be African American, I may be white. That don't matter. We're brothers in Christ, absolutely. Listen to me. Embrace heaven's culture. You see, somewhere we got to get that. I've joked with Brother Harjo. So get me an Indian card. They got benefits I don't get. When we get to heaven, it's not going to be I was born in Tennessee or lived in California. And are you an American Indian or not? How much of your blood is American Indian? When we get to heaven. Oh, citizens of heaven. How would you become a citizen? Well, the blood of Christ. Amen. Yes, sir. That's it. The blood of Christ. You can get mad at me tonight. But I'm headed to a better country. That country is a wonderful country whole lot better than down here. I found that the world's culture creates hate, creates division, creates strife, creates murder, creates drugs, creates things that destroy people. Heaven's culture, hey, it's a wonderful place. So I want to have a little place in Oklahoma City where people can come to. When they walk inside these doors, I want to say, wow, it's a little taste of heaven. Felt like I was in heaven for a few hours. Not because we're better than anyone else. That's not it. But because we embraced a different culture. And we love anybody that comes to those doors. They can come as they are. We'll give them the same sweet gospel that was given to us years ago. And watch them get saved. And watch their citizenship change from wherever they were to another place. Amen. Those in Hebrews, all those in Hebrews, at some point they, they made that decision. I'm asking our church tonight, let's embrace heaven's culture. Let's let people around us say, you're different. Where are you from? Well, I'm a heavener. Yeah. What's that? I'm glad you asked. Let me tell you. Come on. Yeah. Why are you so happy? Oh, because they're happy in heaven. Yes. Why do you whistle and sing all the time? Because I want to irritate you with my bad voice. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Huh? 
I want them to look at us and say, wow, that's a wonderful place. You're a, I, I like your personality. I, I wish I had that. Well, you can. You can become a citizen of where I'm at. Where are you a citizen of? Are you from Mars? No. Where, what part of the state are you from? Well, that's not important. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a citizen of the state. Well, how, well how'd you, where are you? What, what country are you from? Oh, I'm glad you asked. There's a place called heaven. Back in June 21st, Brother Jim, 1973, my citizenship changed. It went, from, it went from this old earth to a place called heaven. I became a heavener, Miss Birdie. I know it's not, not correct, but that's what it is. How about it? I'm glad our church likes that we have the different cultures in here. And I want us to keep the diversity, but what I want is one culture more than anything else. Say what culture? Heaven. Heaven. I think when Brother O'Daniel stepped onto heaven's shores, he left a place and said, got to a place called heaven. He says, well, I... Not too far. It wasn't too much different where I was living. The church I attended and I pastored. I fell at home. I don't want to get to heaven and have culture shock. Brother Bruce, Miss Grace just got back from the Philippines. He's asleep right now. <laughs> different time zone. But I want to get, when I get to heaven, I want to get there and just feel at home. Feel at home. I got a text from someone who's out of town. They got back in town and they said, I know, I know it was. It, it, you just got back in town. You was, out, you was, out, you was over on the, on the eastern side of the state. She got back and Brother Tyler's grandmother, she said to me, she goes, it's good to be home. I wanted to be home. Heaven's culture. I don't know who's going to be the next one to step into heaven's shores. But when they step on those shores, I want them to say, boy, every Sunday and Wednesday night I went to a place was just like this. Just like this. Father, the chance of us making a difference in this city is whether we embrace heaven's culture or this world's culture. And we get caught up in this world's culture, there's going to be a lot of division going on. We can get caught up in heaven's culture, the division will drop aside. Help us to dress, to talk, to live, to listen, to work, everything we do. Our homes, may they, be, may they represent heaven's culture. May we be a place that people can come to and get a little taste of heaven. Have some encouragement because they're here. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed.